So the next step is to separate the fixed cost from the variable cost in the mixed cost formula. So if we if we assume that the total cost is equal to the total fixed cost plus the total variable cost, which of course the var total variable cost would be the variable cost per unit times the number of units. And what we can plug into this formula is either the highest month or the lowest month. My advice is to typically use the highest month. So in, in our example here, our total cost in the highest month would be $90,000 equals fixed cost is what we're trying to find. So we'll call that X plus our vari variable cost per unit we already found to be 10. So 10 times the number of units in the highest month would be 4,000. And again, we could plug in this, the lowest month as well. So we could plug in 70,000 equals X plus 10 times times 2,000 and you'll get the same answer. But my advice would be to typically use the, hi the highest month. So we would have 90,000 equals X plus 40,000, subtract 40,000 from both sides and our X or our fixed cost is equal to $50,000. So now we know that no matter what we produce next month or in the future, we know that we have a $50,000 cost in, in a fixed cost and we also know that we have a $10 variable cost per unit no matter what we produce. So if we produce zero units, our co total cost will be $50,000. If we produce one unit, we would have 50,000 plus 10, 10 times one unit. So we would have $50,000 50, and $10.